In the last video, I finished up my black line composite here. If I don't like how it's arranged within the format of the empty space, I can hold down shift and select all my visible layers and then move them and position them where I want, like so. And then of course, I save it as a Photoshop file. It's never a bad idea to save if it's, if it's looking correct. And then I want to save as a copy and that copy I'm going to save as a JPEG to the desktop. So I hit Command D to navigate it to the desktop. And the tag I want is going to be orange. Because it's, this is my system. And I want it to be at least quality 8. But for something this basic, I can even make quality 12. And it's still going to be quite small. It's 1.4 megabytes. Things to post to Canvas should be 5 megabytes or, or smaller. Now that that's on my desktop, I can go to Canvas, the Canvas course. I can scroll down to my post where I wrote my name and the name of my book and the author that I'm illustrating or inspired by. I hit return a few times so it shows up underneath and then I'm going to add that image using the little landscape icon and then I can just drag and drop the image from my desktop or I can double click and find it on my desktop. It's the orange JPEG and then hit submit. Now when things come into Canvas, especially when they're 8x10 at print resolution, they are really big for the screen, which is good. But we don't want to view it in Canvas where it just takes up the whole screen. So I'm going to scroll it down. And when you do that, you are not taking away quality from the image. I could download this JPEG and it would still be 8x10 inches at 300 pixels per inch. but it gives you my black line art solution. And I like how mine turned out, but I'm just a big fan of Kurt Vonnegut. So I worked a little extra on it. It's always good to be invested in your work. So now what I can do with this video, that meets all the requirements. That is the good black line art jumble that makes sense. But if you want to finish it with some bonus extras, even though you don't get any extra points for it, we can replace the black lines with a color or a texture and we can add further effects to it like drop shadows things like that so i think of this as this is a, a line drawing what if i wanted to cut this line drawing out of wrapping paper or out of some sort of fabric there's an artist named arturo herrera but Arturo Herrera's fine artwork, which often uses jumbles from found imagery, often Disney, when he installs some of them that I've seen him install in mu museums and galleries, he'll cut the, uh, the line art out. He'll specifically cut it out of the material. So it's collaged lines. So we can do that digitally, and I'm going to show you how. So first, I'm going to do a Google image search for something that I think relates to my book. And so Kurt Vonnegut was, this is a science fiction novel of his. It's kind of a, a moral tale. Kurt Vonnegut's work crosses genres. But he was really inspired by short science fiction, like short stories, and he would he wrote in this short format for a long time before breaking through with his novels. So I'm going to look at science fiction comics from the 1950s. And I've limited it to only large ones. Right? And then the ones that I think are, are particularly interesting, I am going to drag and drop onto my reference. Right? So I'm going to open up the folder, and I'm just going to drag and drop these from Google. Macs are good at this into my folder. 
Uh, but this one is what's called a, a WebP file, which is one of the, the only truly protected file formats. So how do I get around that? Haha. I open the image in a new tab. And I say save image as. And I see if that image is a WebP file. And if it is, then I can do a screen grab, but it is not. So that's another reason why you always want to say open image in tab to get to the root file, because this preview is, is protected. We're going to learn more about copyright. But here I am doing what's called transforming this instead of leaving it recognizable. And you'll see how I do that. So I'm going to take multiple backgrounds because I'm going to blend them together a lot like we did for our icons for the class and make a unique kind of wrapping paper to cut my line art out of. And then this is the last one. And I probably don't need four of them. That's probably overkill. And I don't want the words. So let's start with this one. I'm going to drag that in. And then I'm going to shrink down my image and then stretch this so that the text is no longer part of the background. But I want the color. And I'll show you first how I would do it with just one image like this. So. I'm going to take all my layers, I'm going to make sure they're all visible, and I'm going to make sure that my background white is turned off. I'm selected on the top most visible layer, and then I hold down, this is an amazing trick that I've never seen in any class or in any book, and I forget who showed it to me, but it is wonderful. If you hold down Option, and then go up to Layer, and then go and down to where it says Merge Visible. If you don't hold down Option and click this, it will merge all of those layers that have the eyeball turned on into one layer. That makes sense. But if you hold down Option, it will merge them all into one layer and not delete your older layers. So you have the best of both worlds. So now I'm going to turn off all of my previous layers, and now I have my line art alone on one layer. Why does that help? Well, because now I can use the magic wand with contiguous turned off, select the empty space around it, right? And now I am going to swap the selection, which is called inverting the selection, which you do by going to select at the top and saying inverse. Now, instead of the empty space around my lines being selected, now it's all my lines being selected. Then I'm going to take that selection and put it onto this new background. And then I'm going to hit Command-J. Command-J is like a specialized copy-paste, which immediately duplicates the selection into a new layer. Command-J. And then I turn off the background, and voila. I get my line art cut out from that one comic book cover. Super cool. But this looks a little too, too generic, like too based on one cover. So how can I do this for more than one cover? I go back to my sources. Let's pull in something that's very different palette. Again, stretch it out. It's always good to practice this stuff. So that the words aren't there, even though it softens the pixels a little bit. I want a little bit more of that creature, though. There we go. Hit return. You see, it's kind of soft, but that's OK. And now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this layer that's merged, select the empty space. Go to select inverse to select the opposite of the empty space. Move that selection onto this new background and then hit command J and turn off the background. 
So now I have two that I can merge onto each other with opacity. And then I can turn on my white background. And that looks kind of colorful and interesting and unique. And I like that. And I can also double click on one of them and I can add other effects. I can add a stroke around the whole thing. I can add a drop shadow behind it. All things to kind of make it look more like a professionally thought through image. So I'm just going to add a, a little crisp drop shadow. So small size, bigger distance. So it really does look like it's kind of cut out in distance from the white paper behind it. I'll show you what that looks like. And if, anytime I want to, because this is a layer style, I can just take its opacity down a little bit. I can clean it up. Maybe close its distance a little bit, soften it just a tiny bit. I can even make it a colored drop shadow. So if, instead of black at this low opacity, I can make it like a, a dark blue to counter with the warmth of the, the fill color. So just so many options. And now if I like that, I can turn off the background and I'm gonna save this not as a JPEG because that would overwrite my other JPEG. I'm gonna turn off the background and save this as a new kind of file. So I go to save a copy and I'm gonna save it as what's called a PNG. So these are the two online file formats we'll use for, for non-animated work that goes online. <laughs> it is JPEG for things that fill a rectangle and PNG for things that are floating because PNG supports transparency. So if I save it as a PNG and I didn't hit Command D, so that's going to save to my folder instead of to the desktop. But remember, you can always move things from the desktop into your folder. Feed myself there. So now I have all the most updated files in my folder. When I open up the PNG in preview, it doesn't show on white anymore. It shows on kind of a 30% gray. And that's because it's free floating. And if I copy this, so if I go to edit in preview and copy it, and then I open up, or I go to my exercise one folder, right? And I right click it and say, get info, just like we swapped our class folder. I can then paste in my, my icon, but it will be really blurry because it's not a perfect square. But What's great about a PNG is it floats on the background. So if it's on the blue background of my desktop, the blue will fill in the space. But I'm not going to do that yet, right? And then if I put it into Canvas, which I will do, a PNG works just fine in Canvas. It's another online format. And if you decide to color it, I'd like you to upload both your, your black line version and then your colored version. Here we go. Drop it in. Then it will take whatever color is behind it as its color and just canvas happens to be white. And again, I'm going to resize it. But the drop shadow is there. It's very subtle, but it just helps the lines to stand out a little bit. And you can play around with different layer styles. We're going to learn a lot about them through the class. OK. So that is our first exercise. 
if by the end of the semester you think that this is one of the pieces, you know, after you've worked 